Good stuff, man. God, is, I pray is glorified here today. And man, as I said last week, y'all are singing like you mean it. And that's exciting to hear and exciting to see. Well, it's time for our kindergarten first and second graders to go ahead and uh, head on out. If you want to go to Children's Church, kindergarten, first and second grade, you may go. And uh, we'll be bringing them back in here at the end of our service today. But we wanted them to be a part of our worship time so that they can uh, experience the great things that we experience. Amen. Today we're going to continue with the idea of deacons as servants. We're going to be looking again at the idea of ministry and deacons as the servants. Now, last week I shared with you the mindset of a servant. This week I want to talk to you about the, the idea of needing help. Today we'll look back and see in the, the idea of the structure of ministry. Because as I've said before, and I believe it again, is that God is not a God of chaos, amen? He's not an author of chaos. He's an order. He's a God of order. He's a God of structure. And if things seem chaotic, I promise you, it's not God. What, what causes chaos is that man finds the things that God is doing, and then all of a sudden we put our hands in it. And the minute we begin to put our hands in it, we begin to mix it all up, then we have chaos. But when we begin to let God take it and we see that God is working, then we're going to find out that God is a God of structure. And so today, we're going to be looking at the idea of the structure of the church, the structure of the things that we have at First Baptist West and, and the way God has intended for them to be. Now again, this is not a message on the selection of deacons. Because when we look in the Old Testament, there were, there were not deacons in the Old Testament. That is a New Testament call. But what I want to do today is I want to look back at the idea of the structure that we have so that we can see the way God has set things up, that even in the church, they work well when we listen to what God has. So today, the title of the message is Helping Help Needed. In order for a church to function the way God desires for it to function, to not be chaotic, but have the structure and to fulfill the structure, to fulfill the mission that God has called us, the church needs help. Amen? There is a need for people to be helping out in, in the local church, not just here at First Baptist West, but in all churches. I've never seen a church to where the pastor has said, hey folks, it's time to quit volunteering, we have enough. Amen? And so today, that's what we're going to be looking at, is the idea of needing help and, and the, the call for help. And I want you to take your Bibles and turn to the book of Exodus chapter 18. We're going to be starting at verses 13 and reading through verse 23. Now today, to get you up to where we're going to pick up our text, as you know, Moses has been, was called of God to lead the people out of, uh, the, his people out of Egypt and to take them over into the promised land. Well, in the meantime now, with all the times that, that they had messed up, God said, okay, you're not going to go over there right away. You're going to take some time. So what was going on was that Moses then was, was basically overseeing the whole population of Israel. And what was going on was things were beginning to get a little bit crazy for Moses, as you can imagine. And that he was taking care of all the people. Well, he has a father-in-law named Jethro, and Jethro was bringing Moses' wife his daughter, and Moses' kids to meet up with the people of Israel. And they were all going to be together. And so when he brought them there, he began to observe what was going on. And what he saw was not a good thing. And so we are pick up now to where Jethro, who has been watching this for a little time, he's seeing how things are structured, and he's now about to say, man, you need some help. And I believe that if he would look at any church today, he would probably say out to all the pastors the same thing. Man, you need some help. And that's what we want to look at today. The deacons as servants, but also the idea of selection of the deacon. Again, not here, but the idea of calling ministers. And I've shared with you before that I believe that every person who is a member of First Baptist West is a minister. Amen? You're not all, you're not all pastors. You're not all directors, you're not all teachers, you're not all this. But every person that put, has said, I want to serve at First Baptist West, I want to become a member here, my friends, you are a minister through this church. 
And God is wanting us to see that, and God is wanting us to know that every person here, every person that watches this, if you're, if you're a member of another church, then I want to tell you, you are a minister of your church, amen? That's the way God has established it. We all have something that we're supposed to be doing. So I want to look at that today. But let's go ahead and stand in honor of reading God's Word. Exodus chapter 18, starting at verse 13, reading through verse 23. And so it was on the next day that Moses sat to judge the people, and the people stood before Moses and from the morning until the evening. So when Moses' father-in-law saw all that he did for the people, he said, what is this thing, what you're doing for the people? Why do you alone sit and all the people stand before you from morning until evening? And Moses said to his father-in-law, because the people come to me to inquire of God. When they had the difficulty, they come to me, and I judge between one and another, and I I make known the statutes of God and his laws. So Moses' father-in-law said to him, the thing that you're doing is not good. Both you and these people who are with you will surely wear yourselves out, for this thing is too much for you. You are not able to perform it by yourself. Listen now to my voice. I will give you counsel, and God will be with you. Stand before God for the people so that you may bring the difficulties to God. And you shall teach them the statutes and the laws that they show and show them the way uh, which they must walk and the work they must do. Moreover, you shall select from you all the people, able men, such as fear God, men of truth, hating covenants, and place such over them to be rulers of thousands and rulers of hundreds, rulers of fifties and rulers of ten. And let them judge the people at all times. Then it will be uh, that every great matter shall be bring to you, but every small matter they themselves shall judge. So it will be easier for you, and they will bear the burden with you. If you do not, if you do this thing, and God so commands, you then then you will be able to endure, and all the people will also go to their places in peace. Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for the blessing you've given us and the great time we've had. And Father, I pray that we'll continue with, the, with your message today, that God, we would receive it, that God, we'd be encouraged by it, and that Lord, that the words that I'm about to say will not be mine, but yours. I pray, Father, that the message is one that you have set before me, and that Father, I pray that the, it will be received as you desire by your people. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. Please go ahead and be seated. Folks, I want to tell you something that you may not know, but church ministry is a major undertaking, Amen. The ministry of the church is a, big, is a pretty big deal. As a matter of fact, it, it's kind of one of those things that is, is pretty heavy, and it's, it's a very difficult and time-consuming endeavor. If we are going to minister through First Baptist West the way God wants us to be doing, folks, it's not going to be an easy job. And I, can I tell you, it's not going to be a job for one, two, three, five, ten people. If the church is going to be what God desires for it to be, and we're going to be ministering the way God wants it to be, my friend, it's going to take a whole lot of people serving at the same time to make things happen. But it's a very difficult and time-consuming thing for us to do. So what I want to look at is I want to go back into this text, and I want to look at and to show you the structure that God had put in place so that we could be able to do the things that God wants us to do and be successful in the ministry. So the first thing that we have here is we understand there is a need. Jethro came and he looked and he saw what Moses was doing and he said, look, Moses, what you're doing is not good. This is not going to be beneficial to you or it's not going to be beneficial to anyone else because you're not going to be able to stay doing what you're doing for long. So my friends, can I tell you today, there is a need for God's people to be serving. There is a need in the church. There is a need, I want to tell you straight up, there is a need in, at First Baptist West for people to give themselves over to the ministry, to help make First Baptist West what God wants it to be. It's not going to be something that's going to be done by just a few people. As a matter of fact, if that's what our mindset is, if we're okay and say, well, you know what, we'll let everybody else do this, I'm going to just kind of go along for the ride, then what we're going to realize is that God is going to look at us and say, that which you're doing is not good. That's not the way for it to happen. That's not going to be able to make the church successful because just a few people aren't going to be able to do it. So this is what Jethro was telling Moses. So the thing that we have to see is this, was Moses was overseeing the entire group. He was responsible 
for everything that went on, it was him. It was his responsibility to, to deal with all the people, with everything that was going on. And folks, I want you to know something. People have needs. Amen. These folks had needs. And, and the thing that, that I realize is that when you have a need, do you know the most important person is? It's you. Because when I have a need, it's, that's an important thing to me. But guess what? If someone else over here may have a need, and their need to them is important. And so this is what was going on in the, in, in, in the nation of Israel. This is what sometimes goes on in the church. That, my friends, the church is full of needy people. Amen? But we're all needy. I'm needy. I'm a needy individual. Now, I don't mean that in a negative way. I just mean the fact. We're needy. We, 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 we need stuff. We need each other. I've told you before, you need me and I need you. We need each other. We need encouragement. We need strength and we need, we need visited. We need all of these things. And we may say, well, I don't need all that. That's not true. You may be denying it, but people have needs. And the thing is that the details matter. We can't just kind of one size fits all ministry for every person in this church. And that's what he was trying to tell him here. You can't just cast one thing and say, this is for everybody out there. Because every person that's standing in line waiting on you to determine to them what you want them to do, what God is wanting them to do, it's going to take a long, long time. And so we see Moses was tired and the people were frustrated. I mean, he went from sun up. The Bible says he went from sun up to sundown. And all he did was stand before the people. All he did was talk, 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 visit, 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 deal with, deal with. Folks, I'm here to tell you that was wearing him out. And that's what Jethro said. What you're doing isn't good. Because not only are you getting tired, but man, people are getting frustrated. How many of you have to wait in line sometimes? Don't you just love waiting in line? I always tell you, man, it's kind of like sitting at Walmart. Or walking into Walmart and you, every person, you, you do the same thing I do. As we're walking down trying to find a, a checkout, what are we looking for? The shortest line. Amen? We're looking for the short line. Because we want to be able to get in there and we don't want to stand and we don't want to wait. Now I'm going to tell you, I've already told you before, but I'm going to tell you that if you see me at Walmart and you see me get in a line, go to another line. Because I promise you, I have just stepped in to the longest, slowest line that you will ever see. I don't care. That could be one person. I I walk by sometimes even see it and I go, whoo, there's a person there. They've got five items left. They're almost done. I'm there. I mean, I'm button carts out of the way to get there. Inevitably, three items is all they have left, but something's going to go wrong. The, 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 the buzzer thing will go off, uh, something will happen, they're, they're, it's not going through, they'll have to, re- and I'm just standing there going, wow, I thought this was going to be fast. So if you see me at Walmart getting in a line, do not get into my line. Because I know we don't like to get in line, we don't like to wait. Well, listen, people were waiting for hours with their situation that they were really needing guidance on. They were needing help. And he says, this thing that you're doing is not good because you're wearing people out and they're getting frustrated. There's not enough time or energy to do for one or two individuals to do everything that is required in the ministries of God. And he, listen to me. God didn't intend us to be doing that either. There's not enough time in the day for one or two people to do everything that, the, that God is calling for the church to do. So we see here that he told them what you're doing is not good. Everyone wants to be a part of a powerful, dynamic ministry that reaches out to many, many people. Amen? Man, you, we want to be that. As a matter of fact, a lot of people search on the internet, finding a church that's already doing that. But what's happened is that sometimes if we do that, we like to be a part of it, but we don't want to get down in the trenches to keep it going. There's a lot of people who get into these dynamic churches that enjoy the ride. They're just there for the ride, amen? To be able to say, this is what we're doing at my church. Well, what part do you have? Oh, well, I go, every, I go a couple Sundays a month. But there's the deal is if we want a strong, dynamic powerful church and i've told you before listen said in the first service i never have had a goal for first baptist west to be the largest church in lawton i never have don't care 
But what I do want is us to be one of the most effective churches in Lawton that are making differences in people's lives. But listen, my friend, if we're going to make a difference in people's lives, we can't do it. The staff can't do it alone. It's got to take people. It's got to take members who are actively apart because it will get people tired and people will grow frustrated. Most of the time, my friends, you, you won't know how well something's going in a church until it's not. One of the things that I give my, my staff so much credit for, and I tell you they're, they're an amazing staff, is they do an awful lot. And they make things really look smooth, and they make things really look easy. But they do it with very few things. If it looks easy, if, if what went on up here today looked easy, man, we faked you out big time, right, Patrick? We fooled them. You guys in the back, you fooled them well. So that's the point is sometimes we think things are going so well we're not needed. Can I tell you, I'll, I'll lay it straight out for you, there's not a single ministry here at First Baptist West that doesn't need help. Not one. I don't care how good it looks. I don't care how strong they look. I don't care how much they're getting done. I promise you there's not one single ministry here that doesn't need help. And if we're doing this, if we're doing it on our own, and we're letting people not be a part of our ministries, then what we are doing is not good. So we see the need. My friend, there is a great need. The second part of that is the recommendation. He didn't just leave it and say, hey, what you're doing is not good. We see that Jethro then said, here's what I want you to do. I want, I want you to listen. But I want you to do it first to seek God's will. Look what he says in verse 23. In verse 23, he says, if you do this thing, and God so commands. Now, you say, is that a big deal? That's a pretty big statement right there. If you listen to me, but God so demands, commands you to do it. He said, what I want you to do is I want you to seek God's will. Because no matter how good the idea may seem, you still need God in it. Amen? How many of you have ever done a, had a great idea that turned stupid about halfway through it? I mean, on paper, it seemed good. In your mind, it seemed good. Talking it out, it sounded good. Then you get halfway through it and that happens to us sometimes, amen? We get a good idea, then halfway through it, we're going, whoa, this is the dumbest thing I ever tried to do. Because what we might have done, it seemed good on paper, and we saw it. We said, well, I'll do this thing. But yet there was something we missed. We forgot to seek God in it. Because the thing that Jethro understood is that no matter how good the idea seemed, you better get God's opinion of it. You better think about it. Because listen to me, can I tell you this? God is a better and the best advisor you can get. I tell people, and you've heard it, man, if, you, if you're just tuning in or if you've been a member of this church for years, you know that I say it all the time. Please, please, please do not ever do anything just because I said it. Amen? I, I, it blows my mind when I hear people that are trying to explain something and what their reasoning is, is because the preacher told me, our preacher said, well, fine, but go check out what God says about it, amen? Make sure that what I'm saying, I'm not ever offended if you take what I say and you look into the word of God and you put them together and say, wow, he did say that and God agreed with him. Because I'm telling you, I'm not that good to be your sole advisor in spiritual matters. Amen? Even this, I want you to go and check it out. Now, don't nitpick my sermon to death. If you didn't like my joke, I don't care. Don't tell me. Amen? If you don't like my stories, that's okay. I got better ones next week. Come back and join in and they'll get better. But man, when I get to the core, the meat of the scripture, man, I want you to not do it because I said it, because I'm not the best advisor you're going to get. The best advisor you're going to get is the Holy Spirit of God, speaking truth through his word. So he said, seek God's will first. If what I'm telling you sounds good, but man, don't do it just because I told you. Do it because God is what the one that to commands it for you. Jethro knew Moses had a better advisor than he was. And then the second recommendation, he says this, get others to help. Get people to help. 
You, you, you can't do this on your own. Get people to help. More, because I've, I've said it before, more gets done in less time when more people are helping. Amen? My dad always told me, work smart, not hard. So when you work smart, that means get people to help you. I, I tell everybody, I tell my staff, what's the worst thing if you ask someone to do something, what's the worst thing they can do for you to you? Tell you no. Hey, they can't kill you because it's against the law. Amen? So ask. If they tell you no, guess what? Say, okay, God, who's next? And point them out and then go talk. Get people to help. Now, sometimes, though, this kind of goes against, uh, it hurts the a leader's ego if we're not careful. Because it's kind of hard for ego for us to hear this. Oh, you need help. You can't do it by yourself. It's difficult. And sometimes, I, I, I want you to know, and I, I get this way too. I've gotten this way in my ministry. Sometimes we as leaders, we like being the martyr. Oh, me, I'm the only one. Man, I could have done so much better, but more people won't help God. It's only me. God, it's only me. Don't you feel sorry for me, God? Aren't I great, God? Because I'm doing this all by myself, and God's looking at me going, you should have asked somebody. I told you. Ask. It doesn't hurt your ego. Man, it's not a strike to a leader's ego to ask for help. So for all of us, listen, church members, we need to be helping. We need to be a part of what's going on. So he says, I want you to seek God's will, and I want you to get help. That's what we're doing this in the next few weeks. We're going to be seeking God's will because I believe he has called us to call men for, for deacons. And, you know, fellow, he's going to ask us to do that, and we're going to be asking for help. Wow, what a grand idea, amen? Just asking people to help you. Wow. I found out that a lot of times if you ask somebody to help you, most of the time they're going to tell you, yeah. Out of, either out of conviction or guilt. I don't, but I don't care. If you help me, you help me, amen? If you came up here and you helped tear off this carpet, I don't care why you did it. Man, I'm just glad to see you, man. My heart leapt for joy. If you do whatever God has called you to do in the church, then be a part of it and do it. So ask for help. The third one, though, the requirements. Very quickly, let's get, in, let's get into the requirements. He said here, because, listen, he said you need to find the right people. He said, moreover, in verse 21, moreover, you shall select from all the people, out of all the people there, he said, this is what you look for. First of all, you look for able men. Look for those who are able to do it. You know, the biggest part of, of, of ability that I found out, the first part of ability is your availability. Of you saying, God, here I am, I open myself up to you. Because a lot of times we're not able to do something because we're not making ourselves available to do it. And there are certain things, listen, can I tell you, there are certain things in the church that any, any of us could do, even I could do it. I laugh sometimes that whenever I stand out the door greeting and someone says, Pastor, you're out here greeting? I said, they finally found something I could do. I can't mess this part up, amen? I'm standing here opening the door. I can do that. But make ourselves available to say, God, here I am. Whatever you want me to do, I will follow you. Here I am, Lord. So this is the first part of availability. But second with able is people of character. Character, Character is who you are when no one is watching, but also it's what you do when they are. It's not just what you say, but it's what you do when they are watching. It's the stands you take. It, it, it's the life you live when people are watching you. That shows our character. He says, find people who are available. Find people who have character. But the third one, find someone that has good sense. <laughs> oh, y'all quit laughing. I heard some snickers. Find people that have good sense. Find people that don't blow up every second of the day. Find people who have their mind focused on God, and we're going to get to that here in just a minute. But find people with good sense, and also find people with good intent. Find people that their intentions are, are pure. They really do want to do a good job. They really want to do what God wants them to do. I have literally heard over the years of my time in, in, the, in the ministry, I have literally heard when you talk about deacons, I have literally heard men who say, well, I won't be a deacon because when I get up there, man, I'm a deacon. I'm going to straighten stuff out. Right then and there, that in my mind and in my spirit nullified his ability to be a deacon because that was not good intent. 
your intent ought to be, I want to serve God in my church. I want to serve families. I want to help the pastor. If you're, if you're wanting to be a deacon to set me straight, don't do it. Because that's the deacons. They can't set me straight. <laughs> They've been trying. It's impossible. Because I've also told you that when I first came here, I told the deacons, I will never walk in there and ask my deacons for permission. So they're not going to set me straight because I'm not asking them anyway. I'm asking them to pray. I'm asking them to help me, give me advice. But to find people that have good intent, that's not there to, to cause, to, cause to, to bring chaos or, or it's there to just make things better because that's, I've just, I'm so tired of things going wrong, I'm going to set it straight. That's not the able people. But not only find able men, but it says find God-fearing people. Find people that, that fear God. In other words, that they know God. A, a great, the first thing that, that, that we ask people that want to help out at First Baptist West, the very first thing we ask is, do you know Christ as your Savior? Do you know Jesus? Because that's, that's who we want. we want. We want people in the church that know God. We don't want people that are lost to come. Now, we want people that are lost to come in and join us in worship and Bible studies. But listen, we don't want lost people leading out in positions. Do you know God? In other words, do you, do you have that relationship to him? But then also, are you faithful to God? Find somebody that's already faithful. I hear so many times, and it just blows my mind, that when we hear say, well, oh, so-and-so, I think they'd do a good job. Well, they don't come, they're not faithful to anything. Well, but I believe if you let them do it, they'll become faithful. Uh -uh. No, it's not happening. The Bible's very clear and says, a servant must first, first, be found faithful. Faithful to God. Faithful to his purpose and faithful to the church. A servant was first found to be faithful. He said, find faithful guys, find faithful people, but also who are, realize they are accountable to God. Because this, I promise you, if you realize you're accountable to God, can I tell you something? You're going to be level-headed about what you're about to do because if you say, whoa, man, I'm accountable to God on this. If you think yourself accountable to the pastor, a lot of, I found a lot of people don't care because you know what? I can't do anything anyway. But oh, when you realize you're accountable to God, I'm telling you, those are the people you want making decisions because they're realizing, boy, I better get this right. I better seek God because I'm going to stand before him one day. Find people that are accountable to God. Find them that way. But not only God-fearing, but trustworthy. People whose word means something. People when they say something... That it, it, it's going to be there. Men of truth, people of truth, who stand on their word, who you don't have to worry are going to be doing something that they say they're not. Or if they tell you they're going to do it, you don't have to worry about it. But also men who show integrity. Integrity is, a little, is, is close to the same thing as character, but integrity is that consistency between their actions and their inner convictions over time. They say this, they talk a good talk, but their life proves that they believe what they're saying. Because it's easy to say something and then go over here and live your life like crazy. We're talking about those groups in, in our Bible study on, on Sunday nights who say the body and the spirit have nothing in common with each other. You can say, you, as long as you're close to God, you can do whatever you want in life. Folks, listen, can I tell you, there's a lot of people in the church that feel that way. That well, I can talk a good talk, but man, my actions show complete difference. He said, Find men who are trustworthy. And the last one, the last one is they, they hate covetousness. They hate covetousness. Now, that means not desiring to enrich themselves at all cost. Now, what I mean by that is it doesn't mean people who aren't ambitious and want to be successful and they're working hard to get ahead. Listen, there's nothing wrong with that. But it's those who say, I want it because I want for me. I want a position because I want the authority. I want a position because I want the prestige. I want to work because I want to look good. I want people to acknowledge how much good I've been doing. I want that. He said, those are the people that you don't want. You want people who say, you know what? I want to do it because I want to serve God. I want to bring honor and glory to his name, and I want to reach people for Jesus. Wow. Wow. So he says, Moses you got to have help. 
And so today I call out to everyone here and everyone watching. First Baptist West needs help. In the next few weeks, we're going to be looking for, for men to serve as deacons. This is the beginning. This is why we have them, not because we just want to do them, but this is the, 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 the plan that God has laid out for us. And then as we look in the New Testament next week, we'll see the actual calling of deacons. It's not going to be someone that wants to be a deacon because they want the prestige, because as next week when I tell you about the, 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 the role of a deacon and the reward of a deacon, most people are going to be going, I don't want to do that. If you want to be a deacon because you want to be a deacon, you don't know what a deacon does. Well, we're going to look at that next week. But folks, listen, we need help. But we need people who know Christ. So I'm here today and asking you, do you know Jesus? Because the most important thing you can ever do is realize, do you know Christ or not? You need him in your life. So if you're here today and say, man, when you keep mentioning that, Something in my spirit doesn't settle. Something's not right. Maybe it's the fact that you do need Jesus. Then would you call upon his name today and get to know him through his son, Jesus Christ? You need Jesus. And then maybe you're here and you say, well, Pastor, I, I know I, I, I need to just surrender myself to, to God. God, whatever you need, here I am. I want to stand in that gap, God. I want to be the one that says, that, here I am, Lord, send me. Here, my Lord, use me. Here, my Lord, put me where you want me to be. Because I want to help. I want to make a difference in people's lives. Here's our time. Here's our opportunity. I want to ask the praise team to come on back up as we step into this time of our worship service. We're closing things out, but here's a time for you to respond. Here's a time for you to call upon the name of Christ to receive him into your life. Would you do that today? Here's the time for you to say, God, I surrender myself to you wholly and completely. Wherever you lead, I'll go. Whatever you want, I'll do. God, use me today. Father, in Jesus' name, we come to you. We thank you. We thank you for this time that we've just had. God, thank you for using us in this service. And I pray as we step into this praise time, that, Lord, you would just speak to our hearts. That, God, we could just give you everything that we have, surrender everything to you. Use this next few moments, Lord, for us to, to call to you. Here we are. Here we are, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you stand with me as we sing?